Hello, my name is Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for September 11th to September 17th of 2016. And on September 11th, we have the sun, denoted here by this black circle with a dot. And it's in Virgo. It's also in the 47th hexagram. And on the outside of the wheel, we have the chop mark for the 47, numbered from bottom to top. The 47 goes yin, yang, yin. Yang, yang, yin. And then the 47th hexagram is mapped to an opening in an energy channel called a gate. And right here, this is the 47th gate of realizing oppression, a restrictive and adverse state as a result of internal weakness or external strength or both located in the Ajna center in a collective abstract energy path in the sensing circuit called the channel of abstraction, a design of mental activity mixed with clarity that connects to its harmonic, the 64th gate of confusion before completion. Transition like birth requires determined strength for the passage through. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate in describing the person that I use as my primary tool when I provide readings. And we have the following activated gates on September 11th. The sun is in the 47th gate with the earth in the 22nd gate. The north node is in the 64th gate with the south node in the 63rd gate. Mercury is retrograde and it's in the 47th gate along with the sun. Uh, Venus is in the 48th gate. Mars is in the 26th gate. Jupiter is in the 46th gate. We have uh, Saturn in the 9th gate. Uranus is retrograde and it's in the 42nd gate. Neptune is retrograde in the 37th gate. And Pluto is retrograde in the 38th gate. So obviously not every gate activation forms a channel, uh, but this information can be helpful if you know your own human design chart because some of these transits will form channels with potentials in your personal body graph. And as we begin the week, we have one channel definition due to the transit field with the North Node in the 64 and the Sun and Mercury in the 47. We've got the channel of abstraction, a design of mental activity mixed with clarity until September 16th. The energy of this channel is about creating something new out of something old. This is about abstract thought being brought into the collective consciousness through the arts, philosophy, history, and culture. It's wonderful energy for telling stories about our experiences that inspire others, uh, but brings confusion when used to try to resolve our own issues. And the defined Ajna Center uh, can influence people to believe that they are mentally certain even when they are not. And the defined Head Center uh, brings pressure to think about things that don't matter. And uh, September 11th begins with the sun in the second line of the 47. Uh, and the sun in the second line of the 47 is actually being detrimented uh, because Mercury is also in the 47. And it's described as ambition, detrimented, and indecisiveness in times of personal oppression, whether to apply intelligence to recovery or accept the weight uh, to take advantage of other prevailing uh, conditions that may be only to only be temporary the inability to sense when and which activity is healthy and then later on the 11th the Sun then moves into the third line of the 47 uh, and this shift happens at 1234 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time which is 434 UT. The sun in the 47.3 is self-oppression, exalted the conscious and well-integrated being whose natural right action will eventually come to see the unfoundedness in its oppression, the eventual realization that one is really okay, detriment the self-expression so highly uh, energized that it may prove irreversible and destructive, uh, extreme difficulty in realizing one's own self-worth. And then even later on the 11th, the sun then moves into the fourth line of the 47 at 11.42 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 3.42 UT on the 12th. And the sun in the 47.4 is uh, described as repression, the uh, constraints of e e external oppression, uh, exalted, 
the strength of identity that even in times of the most powerful oppression can maintain its resources and to some extent ensure that their survival for the benefit of others. The sense of identity uh, that can be maintained despite external conditioning. Detrimented when robbed of its light, the moon is lost in darkness, barely able to nurture itself, let alone others. The identity uh, overwhelmed by a, 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 external conditioning. And then also on the 11th, Venus moves from the 48 to the 57. So we have uh, Venus, uh, and in human design, Venus is about values, morality, natural law, which we deal with the other and the consequences of the world around us. According to Ra, and Venus is in the 57th gate of intuitive insight, the gentle, the extraordinary power of clarity. Venus is exalted in the first line of the 57, uh, which is confusion, exalted, the gift of penetrating to the inner meaning that ensures uh, timely action, the possibility for uh, intuition penetrating to the, uh, the inner meaning. And in the program, Venus is about control through maintaining the status quo uh, in the way in which we operate with each other. And we all experience uh, the transiting planets through the Maya. And we're not here to avoid the Maya, uh, but to embrace it, but embracing it as yourself by following your individual strategy and authority. On the 12th, the sun then moves into the fifth line of the 47th hexagram at 10.49 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 2.49 UT on the 13th. The sun in the 47.5 is described as the saint. This position has a special significance and there is no planet in detrimented. Uh, exalted the gift in time of oppression to maintain without hypocrisy a harmonic relationship with one's oppressors while providing aid and succor to the oppressed. Uh, realization at its most exalted acceptance of the weight of the abstract process and the grace that naturally follows. No polarity, detriment, no planet in detriment. On the 13th, the sun then moves into the sixth line of the 47th hexagram uh, at 9.56 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 1.56 UT uh, on the 14th. And the sun is detrimented in the 47.6 as futility, a difficult position for which there is no exaltation. Detrimented. The sun in detriment, where the strength of will alone may find a, may find a way to adapt and survive, uh, but without hope of ever overcoming its the, the oppression, the life of uh, the ordeal stripped of realization. And then on the 14th, the sun moves out of the 47. It's leaving Mercury behind, and it moves into the six. moves into the 6 and the earth moves from the 22 to the 36 and we will put Mars back in the 26 over here since I knocked that down um, so that all looks good so we start out we're talking about the earth is in the 36 gate of crisis, the darkening of the light, the rule of cycles in which decline is a natural but not enduring stage. And this shift happens at 9.02 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 1.02 UT on the 15th. Uh, the sun in, is in the sixth gate of friction, uh, conflict, the fundamental design component of progress, the law that growth cannot exist without friction. And the sun in the first line of the sixth hexagram, this is the line of retreat, the realization that wasting one's resources against overwhelming odds is not courage, but folly, exalted the power of regeneration that can embrace retreat as a phase and not a failure. The emotional stability to accept 
conflict, detrimented the inferiority complex, where retreat is experienced as a personal weakness, uh, emotional instability in times of conflict. And as we move from the 47 to the 6, um, we are, are move into uh, a solar plexus gate of having waves of friction in intimacy. Uh, the six is like a diaphragm that's open or closed to sexual intimacy. Um, this is one of the eight profiling gates. It's very interesting, uh, a very interesting solar plexus gate uh, because in uh, that in its wave it includes the root of desire, the root of romance, and the root of need. It brings fear of intimacy or not this is friction and friction and uh that in relationships is not supposed to be in that relationships are not supposed to be stable because of the nature of the solar plexus uh and and friction generates heat and uh, it also generates conflict and through conflict in relationships we're able to see our shadow as it's mirrored uh, to us by the other and uh, we do the same for our partners and the sixth gate is part of the of the tribal defense circuit with its harmonic the 59th gate of sexual strategies of supporting social encounters for the genetic imperative uh, to reproduce the uh, sacral gate of aura breaking sexual identity in the channel of mating and the six determines whether intimacy will occur or not and its polarity uh, is the solar plexus gate 36 um, which is it, it is the gate of crisis uh, moving from inexperience to experience and this brings us to the third variation of the cross of Eden uh, this one in the quarter of duality and in the story of Eden uh, the conflict was uh, whether to eat the apple and gain knowledge or don't eat the apple and remain innocent and of course the loss of innocence lead to be led to being kicked out of the garden having sex and having children and then on the 15th, the sun then moves into the second line of the sixth hexagram at 8.07 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is uh, 007 UT on the 16th. Uh, the sun in the uh, second line of the sixth hexagram is described as the gorilla, the ability to maximize an inferior position through timely contact and withdrawal, exalted aesthetic sensitivity uh, and mental detail to find the weakest point. Uh, the sensitivity to find the weakest point in a conflict and exploit it emotionally detrimented. The kamikaze striking but moot. Uh, the lack of sensitivity uh, that that uh, blunders into conflicts. And then also on the 15th, uh, Venus moves from the 57 to the 32. And Mars moves from the 26 to the 11. So we've got uh, uh, Venus, uh, again, we talked about it being about values and morality and, and things like that in, in human design. Um, and uh, it's in the gate, uh, the 32nd gate of, uh, of continuity duration. The only thing that endures is change. And Venus is in the first line of the 32 uh, of uh, conservation, exalted the life-sustaining respect and attention to all aspects of a process, the potential to develop the instinct through detailed attention to the process, detrimented the uh, uncontrollable urge to bypass essentials, which inevitably leads to the disruption of continuity, uh, the fear of lack of potential and the corresponding lack of attention. And then also we've got Mars moving uh, on the 11th, is moving from the 26th to the 11th, uh, and um, uh, uh, Mars is in the gate of ideas, in a peace, a harmonic condition uh, in which the individual or society prevents assessment before renewed action. And Mars is detrimented in the first line of the 11th hexagram. 
uh, which is uh, a, a attunement, the serendipity of being in the right place at the right time, detriment, the fear of anonymity, uh, and the sense that one uh, that no one will value their ideas. And Mars in the program is about a, 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 a ex expression through mutation. Uh, this plays out in the mundane plane as change. Uh, these are changes that take hold in the homogenized world as fads or trends. Uh, and this is an illusion because the population is ready for the same change at the same time because of transiting Mars. On the 16th, the sun moves into the third line of the sixth hexagram at, uh, uh, at 7, 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 2312 UT. The sun in the third line of the sixth hexagram is uh, allegiance, the ability to uh, secure support and create strength out of a weak position. When connected to the harmonic 59th gate, mating that results in uh, conception. Exalted, uh, the destruction of old forms through union, either uh, mundane as, uh, uh, as above se sexual union, or exalted as in universalization. The depth of feeling uh, that can enrich union and intimacy. Detriment of the rejection of allegiance as a submission to uh, established order, the sensitivity to controls which uh, may eventually reject intimacy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then also on the 16th, uh, Mercury backs out of the 47 and into the uh, uh, into the 64, <coughs> where it's joining the North Node. So we no longer have uh, the head center or Ajna center. Is being defined by the transits. So, uh, you know, Mercury in human design, well, mythology, Mercury was the messenger to the gods. So this is about communication. In human design, Ra describes it as an expansion of human consciousness through communication, not just as words, but also through music. And it's in uh, the 64th gate of confusion before completion. Transition like birth requires a determined strength for the passage through. And uh, retrograde Mercury uh, is in the sixth line of the 64th uh, hexagram. Uh, and this is the line of uh, victory where Mercury is exalted. So uh, victory exalted the mental assuredness that uh, knew that victory was inevitable thus making triumph sweet, uh, but not a reason for excess. The mental gift of enjoying the confusion and its diversity of data. And in the program, Mercury is about expression through communication. It influences the homogenized population to communicate about the themes of the gate and line that transiting Mercury inhabits. Its primary impact is psychological, it impacts the not-self mind. It distorts the way in which we look at things, uh, which uh, uh, can then lead to action. Uh, and this conditions people to think and communicate about the same things. And in the 64th gate, I'd expect people to be talking about being confused by past experiences. And then on the 17th, the sun then moves into the fourth line of the sixth hexagram at 6, 16 uh, p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 2216 UT. Uh, the sun is exalted in the fourth line of the sixth hexagram and is described as triumph, a position on natural and unchallengeable power. Exalted, the clarity and wisdom that must uh, come with victory and the movement towards new horizons. Uh, the power of emotions to dominate a relationship. So anyway, thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly neutrino forecast will be for September 18, 2016. Should be available on the 17th when we'll continue to look at the influence of the heavenly bodies as they transit the sky and the hexagrams of the I Ching. And you can check us out on Facebook, blogger and YouTube as there's New World Birth Presences in all those places. And I encourage you uh, to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. And invite you to contact me 
at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you have any questions or you wish to schedule a reading. And if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me. I would love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA, or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. We're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available. And you can make a donation by contacting me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com, and I'll give you instructions on how you can do that. Or as I've said in the past, getting a reading is a wonderful way to support us here at New World Birth, as well as get something very powerful for yourself. Uh, and I do a variety of read readings, you know, human design foundation readings, astrology transit readings, uh, solar return readings, uh, Saturn return, Uranus opposition, Chiron return readings. Uh, and uh, so there's, there's a lot of different things that are offered. Um, and so please contact me. I would definitely uh, be very happy to to uh, to provide you a reading at this point. Uh, so that if you're interested, please, please do send me an email. Um, anyway, as always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for these ancient mysteries, their synthesis and application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. In Lakesh, and as Ra would say, love yourself. All my best to everybody and look forward to connecting with you in the future.